Welcome to First Class Counselors, where we give camp counselors insider tips and advice on how to make a camper's summer the best it can be. Because you only get a few days of staff training in the summer. So this is your year-round endurance training for the summer to come. My name is Oliver Gregan. I am the executive director of YMCA Camp Winona in Leon Springs, Florida. My pronouns are he, him. My name is Matt Wilfred. My pronouns are he, him. I'm the director of overnight programs at Campfire Circle, the executive producer of podcasting here at Go Camp Pro. And I am so thrilled to bring you this episode of First Class Counselors. Yeah. And before we get started, huge congratulations to Matt. He is officially, I guess, back in the camp world, but he never really left. Like he was doing this <laughs> podcast the whole time. Um, you know, COVID set everyone back a little bit. But, uh, you know, back in the camp world, we're excited to have him. Uh, Matt, do you want to kind of explain to people what your role is now? Yeah, for sure. Well, thanks. Thanks, Oliver. Uh, it was a bit of a detour, right? I think, is the best is the best way to describe it. But, um, yeah, so I am the director of overnight programs for an organization here in Ontario called Campfire Circle, which serves kids uh, with specific medical illnesses. The, the camp programs that we run are for kids and families who are experiencing oncology diagnoses. So that's uh, living with cancer treatments or past cancer treatments. Uh, and my job is the director of of one of their two overnight campsites. So uh, similar to like uh, an executive director of one site, um, I work with a, with another manager, kind of like an assistant director, um, and together we run one of the overnight programs, but we're, we're definitely a part of a big organization. Um, so we do a bunch of different uh, stuff. So I sit on the DEI committee um, of my org, and, and I'm, I'm at, this is like week three for me uh, of really starting. So it's fresh and it's brand new, and uh, we're really looking forward to this summer, and, and I'm, I'm thrilled to be back uh, in this kind of formal role within the camp industry. So thanks for giving me some space, Oliver. It's, it's great to be a, 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 another different form of coworker with you again. Yeah, I know. I'm so excited. Before we got started, Matt had started talking about how he's gotten back into the hiring game of camp, which for many <laughs> camp professionals, you know what that world is like at this point in time. So I kind of just gave him a little laugh and said, welcome back to the team. Um, <laughs> that being said, if you're listening to this podcast, I hope you're working at camp this summer. And if you're not, Matt is probably looking for staff just like uh, I am too. So we're uh, camps are kind of always looking. But, uh, sure. but with that being said, congratulations, Matt. We're so happy to have you back formally, I guess, in camping, but uh, you never really left. Like you said, it was just a detour. To be honest, you still kept your foot in the water. So, uh, (laughs) (laughs) but today's topic, if you have not been listening to the podcast, you would probably not have heard our last episode, but it's a must listen. Mm -hmm. Uh, We were able to get a bunch of camp directors from across the industry, share some of their stories and their insights on some of their best counselors. It's a very short 15 minute episode and we can't wait to have you hear it. So go and listen. No, like literally go and listen to it right now. We'll wait. No, no really, like we're, we're going to wait. Matt, um, do you want to do something while we're waiting? They can go and listen to that podcast. We got like 15 minutes. Yeah, I'll just like practice my harmonica skills. Like just like give a little like... <laughs> Um, all right, actually, what? just just pause for our listeners. Wait. Just pause this what? podcast, sure? go and listen to the other one, and then come back here. And when you can stop hearing the harmonica, then then you know the show is started. Just kidding. <laughs> How you We're have a harmonica is just ready at the at ready at the go. It's, it's the part that baffles me. Um, but, <laughs> it's so on a holster. You... It's on a holster on my belt. I've always got it ready. Oh gosh. Okay. This moment needs cool. some harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, cool. So if you are coming back to the show right now is the time where you were um, speeding past Matt on his harmonica and you've gotten to listen to our last episode. Thank you so much. Uh, it gets us another lesson in the bucket, but also um, you get a little bit of information from some of the best in the business. Um, some of the names that were on there are a lot of our GoPro community, huge in the YCA, because I have a lot of friends who are able to record, which is great to hear them. Um, and thank you to all of those friends again um, from across the industry who were able to give a little bit uh, talk about it. But mm-hmm. you were probably wondering at this point, and the same thing came across my head when I got to hear all of them come together, is why are there so many different types of great counselors? Like there were 
so many values that were displayed in a, every single one of those stories that it doesn't mean that there's one value that makes a great counselor, but there's so many different ones. And that's really what we want to target today. Because sometimes we get caught up in this whole, oh, the great counselors are the ones who, you know, are great at soccer or can go and do sailing really well, or the loud ones that get up on stage and sing the songs as loud as they can, and mm -hmm. everyone gets behind them. But you'll see that some of those qualities, while are important in order to make sure camp can operate, they're not the top quality. And we're going to talk about some of those top qualities today that some of those camp directors who were the best in the business saw in their staff as they went through. So as we work through that, um, stay till the end because then Matt and I will share what our top qualities are, what we saw in some of our great staff as well. So stay tuned for that. Don't skip ahead. Um, but let's get started. And let's just go with our first opinion. So when you were listening to that podcast, Matt, you know, getting to hear all these camp, great camp directors from across um, different camps, what came over you? What did you think about? What was the feeling like? What came to your head when you heard the different opinions and statements from those staff and those mm. directors? Well, I, I think Oliver, you you spoke really well about the diversity of of what makes a great camp counselor, and and it reminded me also of the fact that like not one style fits every kid, right? Not one type of personality or a set of skills is going to reach every camper, and and that's important. It's really important that we have a diverse group of staff members that are um, impacting kids. And, and and listening to those stories, I felt extremely grateful that those staff members have been there for campers. Um, and it really reaffirmed to me why we do what we do here on this podcast, um, because we know about the impact that a great camp counselor can have on a kid's week at camp. Um, and, and we know how how the relationship between a camper and a camp counselor is is not only what brings them back to camp year after year, but it can really foster some of those lifelong friendships and values about what care looks like and what a what great leadership looks like. I still remember some of my favorite camp counselors um, and not for like the specific silly things they did. I remember that about them, but they really taught me what it means to be a person of integrity or to, to be goofy or um, to be myself. All of those really important values I, I learned at a really young age from my favorite camp counselors. And the other thing was uh, in, in terms of like the diversity of skills, I thought it was a good reminder uh, for for counselors out there that directors have different values as well. And and your director is different than me as a camp director, is different than Oliver as a camp director. Um, and, and it reminded me as a director that I need to be aware of kind of some of those biases that I have. And like, just because I'm an extroverted person and, and I might notice that from a different camp counselor, I now remember that that's not the most important thing or there are other important things and different skills out there so remembering for you listeners out there to be uniquely you be yourself in that way um and and use these tips that we're going to give you in this episode just as with all of our episodes as kind of guideposts um, but finding your style if it is intentional and it is camper focused um and some of these big um underlying themes that we're going to be talking about here your style is the style for you and will reach some kids out there. What about you, Oliver? Yeah, I think you hit the, you hit it so well. There's so many different types of counselors. And one of the things that I talk about, like while I'm recruiting staff is I'll, I'll have staff come up to me like, well, I'm a biochem major with an engineering background. Like I'm never planning on working with kids. Um, and I'm recruiting the staff member to come work at camp. And like, why are you bothering with this conversation? There's like 15 ed majors, like a bunch of child psych kids. Like, why aren't you bothering with them? And I go, because I'm going to have kids who come to camp who are going to grow up to be like you, right? Like they don't know it yet, but like, that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. There's 800 kids coming to Camp Winona this summer. Not all of them are going to grow up to be teachers, child psych majors, and and within those fields of social of like social studies like some of them are literally going to be just like you a computer science major and there's no computers at camp it's just the way that it's going to work and they need someone like you to inspire them to let them know like they can be their whole wholesome self and that's mm -hmm. talking about skills that's not even talking about the value aspect that those people can bring to the table as well right if you like think about 
people who are sometimes more analytically minded, right? Like your personality type is usually going to be a little bit different than somebody um, in a different field, right. right? And those kids need someone to look up to who might, you know, need to break down the numbers and find more logic than maybe mm -hmm. the counselor who is different and is more feeling based uh, and emotion and emotionally attached, right? Mm -hmm. Every single kid who comes to camp is different and they need those counselors with different values um, and the different lifestyles to show them like, hey, what can I be? What, what will I be one day? And when I finished listening to that podcast, I actually went back and listened to it again because I just wanted to hear it again. But it's kind of inspiring. It's kind of it's kind of like when you listen, uh, if you ever like are an athlete or you have something really going like really big coming up or you just want to amp yourself up, you go into YouTube and you like type in like inspirational speeches yeah, yeah. Yeah. compilation. And that's literally what the podcast is. So when you go through and you listen and you hear these stories and you hear these um, like values of different counselors and at least for me in my head now as a director, I can like start putting faces to different values that I've seen over time. Mm. And um, it, it just is this like feeling of heartwarming. I like want to copy those qualities, like exemplify them. I'm going to be like, oh, I want to be all those things. I want my staff to be all those things. I want to see it. How do I do it? And you know what? We're going to do that in this episode. We're going to give you some skills that you can get those values, that heartwarming stuff, and then make your entire summer camp an inspirational speech compilation. So let's do it, Matt. Wow, let's what a setup. A I know. I'm, I'm getting better at transitions. It only took like 50 episodes. <laughs> You're killing it. You're um, killing it. I'm doing my best. All right. But let's talk about Matt. What was one of um, one of our speakers, I, I, or I guess your favorite value that really came through on that show? Like when someone was speaking, who hit you in the feels? Who like or mm. made you feel logical about something? Like, oh man, that is really important. Um, what was what was the, I guess your favorite value or the one that hit the hardest? Yeah, I, I think uh, Ruby talked about this, in, I think in the very first one, and then I heard a couple other people um, in this, and the common theme that came out to me, um, I think you're going to hit on one of them, but I think a different one was the the ability to be open to learning and being flexible. Um, I, I think that is one of the biggest skills that you can bring to the job, and, and that open and flexibility doesn't take a lot of like effort to learn those things. It's literally just being open to possibilities. It does, you can gain some more skills with, you know, noticing things and, and noticing where you might need to be flexible or noticing where you have a gap in knowledge. That that can be something that takes a little bit of time. But the, the tip that I would give you for just how to be more open to things is think about your face. I learned this one year at camp and it's never, it's never left me is that whenever you're hearing about something new or like a change in the schedule, like think, think about camp, right? A change in the schedule, a change in the meal plan, uh, something that needs to happen, a, like a change organizationally that you're not quite sure about, what story is your face telling about that situation? And put yourself in, in the position of the person who's delivering that message. Because often, you know, as a, a director and a, and a leader, it's uncomfortable when you have to talk about change, potentially something that's hard or something that might be confusing. And you as a counselor, you having just an open face and an open face is literally um, not having like resting poop face. I'm not going to use the actual word, um, but you know what I mean? Like what, 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 it, what it, are your eyes open? Are you, you don't have to be like smiling and happy about it, but it's, it's just the face. Now I'm only thinking about what my face looks like right now, but it's just, it's like, you're nodding along. You're, you're looking, you're making eye contact. You're not frowning because sometimes, you know, sometimes like a change can be confusing, but if you have that like confused face, sometimes that can be like, it can be interpreted as a, like a disgusted face or a, um, you know, a, a questioning face. And that might throw somebody off who's giving some of that message. Um, so, in terms of flexibility, if you can kind of start with that, I think, you know, have you heard about, um, you know, like when you smile about a situation, you are, you're put in a more positive headspace. I believe that to be true in this case too, is that if, if you say, is my face open to change? Am I being open to this? Is my, even like, is my stance open to it? Are my shoulders 
fully open in that way. Um, I think that you will, will inherently become more flexible about a situation. Um, and also in this episode, I'm going to, I'm going to broken record you a little bit and refer you to other episodes because we don't have time to break down each one of these skills individually. Um, but the, uh, the one that I would refer you to is inspirational initiative taking. And that was episode 15, uh, that we, that we did here. And that will talk a lot about uh, ways where you can be, um, not just like open to flexibility, but open to learning about a new situation as well, and then jumping in with some of that new knowledge. So uh, I recommend you put on your list episode 15. Oliver, what about you? Yeah, I love talking about the face um, and a good practical skill that you could do during like staff training to get your staff understanding what their face looks like at different times is uh, challenge a staff member who like to pair them up and have a staff member try to take pictures of that other staff member's face during different points of the day and say like, hey, I want you to find these five emotions, like bored, upset, happy, excited, um, and like a goofy one, like um, interested or something dumb. Uh, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Like hungry, uh, but could be a hungry, like what does that hungry face look hungry, like? Hungry, hungry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, or, or hangry. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, but challenge a staff member to get those pictures of another staff member and then um, do another training later in the week where like hopefully they've been successful and they've got, been able to get those photos and like they get a prize if they can get all five or something to make sure they actually think about it throughout the week. But then have them sit down with that person they took the photos with and be like, I found you, this is what your face looked like during this training and you looked tired. Am I right? And they're like, oh yeah. I was like, well, like, do we want to look tired during a training? No, but like it allows a staff member to really evaluate what their face looks like at different times and what other people are seeing, right? Because the person taking the photo is a person who is seeing what your face is like in those moments mm -hmm. um, where you're maybe not training your face to look like it's supposed to. But my favorite value, like going back, listening, um, I, um, I'm a really big storyteller. I really like hearing stories. Um, and I thought that Travis talking about uh, the counselor who um, had a nice dry life jacket on, taking it off and passing it to a camper so they could wear a dry life jacket instead of a wet one like everybody else was wearing, uh, was just a really cool story that talks about this idea we've talked about on the show so many times of putting campers first, right? Um, like your comfort comes second to them. And we'll talk about this probably a bit more during the episode. In fact, we have a whole section about it. Um, but there's some things that I really love to point out in the story, like, cause even if you take an outside perspective and listen to Travis's story, and then you've been a camp person before and can imagine it, you are, you're in your head going, oh man, that kid, like that kid was going to be the only one, every, every kid was going to have a, a wet life jacket. There was nothing that made that kid special. The counselor was prepared as all counselors should be uh, and have like the rain jacket on and everything and cover themselves up so they could be dry. That's, awesome right and if you know anything like you as a counselor you want to always be the most prepared so that you're not going to be wet and stuck with a dry or stuck with a wet life jacket so when you evaluate that story something else that you see is a lot of the times that counselor will have that dry life jacket on and they'll look at that camper who is like not willing to do the activity and go well this kid's just spoiled right like every other kid is putting on a, white, a wet life jacket right now to go and enjoy this activity. But this one is like too spoiled or not willing to put this life jacket on. And a lot of staff just get upset at that point. They're like, I don't, mm -hmm. I'm like what? Uh, but the part that made that story so beautiful is the important thing was that the camper had the experience of what they were about to do, the activity. That was more important than the comfort or the spoiledness because who knows, maybe getting to go and do that activity now gets that camper to realize, oh man, oh man, everybody else had a wet life jacket. I had a dry one. That's what it took to me. To do this. But I can do this activity now with a wet life jacket if I really needed to, because I just saw everybody else do it, right? Yeah. That, that camper has to come to that point. And that counselor realized that the personal comfort at that point in time was not as important as making sure that that camper was going to have a good time and, and have that new experience or, or have that experience in general. And then the other thing that I think that Travis really put into good imagery was that moment where the counselor like took the wet life jacket, took that deep breath 
and then put the wet life jacket on. Yeah. I understand like you can do that as a counselor. Like you can take that half moment to go, all right, it's time to embrace the suck. Yeah. To do this. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to put this on. It's going to feel wet. It's going to feel cold. I'm going to be uncomfortable, but you know what? I know that it's only for the next mm-hmm. hour. It's only for the next 45 minutes. I can make it. I can do this. And I will only be a little bit damp and only a little bit cold. I can do mm-hmm. it. And that's, and you're, that's and you're really role modeling, different. right? You're role modeling in that, that sense too, of like you're in it together. And, and I think that the other thing with that story, Oliver, is that we don't know everything about our campers. We know some things, we know what comes in on their medical forms, but you know, we don't, maybe that kid is more sensitive to the cold than the others. Maybe he has some uh, like a medical condition um, where that's really uncomfortable or something with their skin that that would be really uncomfortable. And um, like, I think we worry so much about like, oh, what precedent does that set? Or like, oh, every kid's not going to get a, a, a dry life jacket. So why should this one? Or you're like, that's not fair for some of them. And, and I, I really like Oliver what you said. It's what that kid needs in that moment. And if, if a group of campers is like, well, why did Timmy get the dry life jacket? You, the answer is like, Timmy, Timmy needed the dry life jacket in that moment. And if there's something that you need and there's a way that I can get it for you, I will also do my best to do that for you. And that, and, and usually conversations kind of end there because either a camper is satisfied with that answer or they're not, but they're already wearing a le- wet life jacket anyway. So you just move forward. Um, but, but what they need in that moment, I think is a really great mindset to have. Yeah, and, and to look at this situation too on another perspective, another thing that's really important for me personally as a camp director is like, I want situations where kids can build grit. Like I want the situation mm-hmm. where that kid puts on that wet life jacket and gets that there on the lake. And if that counselor can get that camper to put on the, white, the wet life jacket and go and enjoy the activity, that's great. Like that, that for me as a value for me as a camp director is something that I want to see. I want to be able to see that kid have just as much grit as everybody else. Um, and I'm already happy with the counselor because they were prepared and made sure they had a dry life jacket. So now I see, all right, cool. I have a prepared staff member. That's an important value for me. I have a staff member who's getting a kid to embrace the grit of this situation and be, and, and get through it. Um, but I stop there because there's, the important value as well that everyone's challenge, right? We talk about challenge by choice, but you choose the challenge, right? So everyone's coming in at a different level and we need to make sure that we're finding the level for our camper where their grit is able to come in because you might have a kid who's coming in and, you know, to be honest, I said spoiled earlier, they might be coming in and they're a little bit more spoiled and putting on that life jacket is not something they're willing to do at their grit level. But You can get them to put on a life jacket, Mm -hmm. get in that boat or go do that activity, right? You are getting them into that yellow zone where it's, it's challenging enough for them to, to move forward and grow. And that's, Mm -hmm. that's a value that is also really important. And this is as a counselor, you start to learn that there's different values and you learn to balance them out, which I think is really cool as well. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, But we're talking a lot about this camper first mentality. And, and I think that came across on pretty much most of the statements that were given by the camp directors. So I want us to talk a little bit about some actual skills that you can do as a counselor you might see um, that can help you put campers first in your operations at camp as you as a counselor. So, um, so let's get started. Matt, what are some things that you want to share that's about that camper first mentality? Mm. Uh, we, we've talked a lot about, we've, we haven't done a whole episode on this, but like clearly based on how long we talked about that, 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 that last part there, uh, I think we could do a whole episode, but I know that we've mentioned parts of, of this. Uh, so I'll, again, I'll refer back to some other episodes, but, but two, two things that I really think about when it comes to this, um, maybe three, one is Travis explains that his like unifying theory of summer camp. And I've said this, I know I've said this on the podcast before is I am always teaching. It's what are we teaching in that moment to kids through our actions and being camper first means understanding the impact that we have on a kid in every single moment, how we speak to them, um, how, how we respond to their needs going, going back to the life jacket thing. How, how are you having that conversation about grit 
Are, are you just saying like, put on the life jacket, it'll be good for you. Or you can having an intentional conversation and saying, Hey, you know what? I get it. Sometimes it's, it's hard when, when you feel like you're going to be cold and wet and, and, it, uh, and, and, and Hey, this is why I wore my rain jacket teaching a lesson in that. Um, do you want to give it a try here? I'll put on a wet one with you. We'll do it together. That's very different than telling a kid, Hey, just put on this life jacket. Um, and you're teaching them a lot in that moment. I'll give you two kind of practical tips. One is, uh, I think a lot, of, a lot of people in the episode talked about um, being there for the kids and that being their reason why you're at camp. And I totally agree with that. And um, as we talked about in our self-care episode, you have to understand that the, the summer job is a marathon in itself. It's a kind of like a sprinting marathon. You're so busy all the time and it's tiring and it's hard. It's one of the hardest and best jobs in the entire world. So when you are off from that job, there's a couple important things that will help you when you are on with that job in your camper first mentality. And the big things is like in the staff lounge, if that's what you have at your camp or, or when you're on a day off or anything like that, really think about how you're speaking about camp in that moment. One, the practical reasons that I, I've always heard this story about how um, staff went on a, a day off after a week at camp and they were in a restaurant, like a McDonald's in a booth, and they just started complaining about a specific camper and who was sitting behind the, in the booth behind them with their family after a week at camp was that camper womp womp like that that is brutal i i, I would be so embarrassed if that happened to me or to a staff that i was working with um but it's also just like how are you speaking about that because how you speak and the words that you use is the reality that you create so if you're constantly like complaining um you know, complaining without looking for solutions. There's a difference between complaining and brainstorming, right? Um, but that will affect how you go into the next situation with that camper or a situation similar. So um, I'm not saying don't express when you're frustrated or if there's something you need help with, but how are you doing that? Because if you're just venting, then you're not really trying to solve your problems in that way. The other thing about being camper first that, that I always try to remember, and I still need to remember this, and I've been doing camp programs for 20 years ish, maybe not 20 years, but a long time um, is just understanding where kids are socially, emotionally, and physically, what is appropriate for the kid in that moment and making adaptations to programs that they will be excited about. And that doesn't sound like a very practical tip, but if you listen to episodes uh, 30, where we talk about camper friendly language, this, this will kind of help you how to speak to kids. Um, and then we did a two part episode on ages and stages and how to, uh, how to approach camp programs and language and all of that stuff with different age groups. So that was episodes 50 and 51 that you'll want to listen to. Um, they'll give you some of those practical tips about how to adapt um, to different ages and making sure that it's age appropriate because, you know, like playing Gagaball is super fun, but Gagaball is not super fun for like peewee campers, but you can still give them that experience just in a different way. Those are my kind of things like camper first mentality. What about you, Oliver? Yeah, I, I go back, listen to the podcast, like, listen, it, it's a core, core theme for us here with First Class Counselors is putting campers first. It's across our entire series. So please go, go, go listen. Um, some things that I like to put out there for what we do here at Winona is we have the I Am 99th Award. So at the end of each week, we award each counselor, or sorry, we award a counselor who truly put others before themselves for the success of camp or whatever hmm. might've been necessary, but um, it's what we recognize. And it, it's who's the counselor who's volunteering, right? To take on a challenge, not volunteering so they can get away from their kids for an hour. It's volunteering to make camp uh, improve in a way that the experience for their campers goes above and beyond. And sometimes it's for the jobs that aren't fun, right? It's the, it's the counselor who like raises their hand because it's, um, we need a cabin to volunteer to clean up the dining hall after a meal or something um, because everybody else has to really, really quickly rush to the next activity because we're running late. So we need a staff member to fill that void of making sure the dining hall is tidied afterwards. Um, it might be uh, it might be that counselor who, you know, that week their co got sick and they just ended up being 
a lot more single coverage on their cabin than the average counselor should ever be. And just because they're filling in that void, right? They're, they're being there for their kids. And it might be the counselor who steps up because maybe they just had a situation in their cabin that week. Something that was super difficult um, to handle because maybe it was a camper who has a history that came forward. Maybe it was just a camper whose behavior um, was not modifying itself quickly enough to be adequate at camp. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of different things going to happen, but it, we want to honor that. So if your camp has a way to do that um, or isn't, maybe this is something that you put forward at staff training this year is saying, hey, I don't want to recognize the best staff member. That's not important. I mean, if your camp does that, that's great. I want to recognize the staff member who, who had the weight on their shoulders this week, or I want to recognize the staff member who put that weight on their shoulders mm -hmm. and they, they made it, not made it through the week, but they were able to hold that with dignity, hold that humbly and, and, and were amazing um, for putting others first. And that's, that's mm -hmm. what it is. Um, I, I like to use the word altruism, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's such a great word. So that, that's a way to recognize those people. And the, I, one thing that I really love about that award is typically those people never see it coming. Like that, mm. that award is just- They don't do it for them. that reason. Yeah. Um, so you call their name out at the end of the session or um, that like final meeting and they just go, wait, what? Like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, I'm not <laughs> the person who should be getting this. And that, it's just, I always find it to be a really beautiful moment. It's one of my favorite things that we do here at Camp Winona as part of our tradition. Um, the next is like, just think about where you end up in the pecking order, right? So in the dining hall, are you putting your campers first and making sure that they all have food on their table first? Um, when you go to take a seat somewhere on camp, are you sitting in a space where you have a clear view of everybody so you can kind of see all of your campers? Like that's basic supervision, but it's also saying like, hey, I'm not gonna stand in a spot where I'm talking to my friends. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stand in a spot where I can see everybody. And if my friends come over, I can talk to them as my kids are doing their thing. I'm still focused on my kids, but I, I put, I'm putting myself in a position where my kids come first. So if think about it like lifeguarding. You know, you can have someone who's standing next to you talking to you as you're scanning the room, watching your kids, and then all of a sudden you go and handle it. And that's, that's a simple way to do it where like if you're tired and can't be dancing on the dance floor, like I'm thinking about the camp dance, you mm -hmm. can still be actively involved with making sure the event is, is going off and you're aware of what's going on with your camper needs. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just like where you walk and where you sit. Those are simple things that show, hey, I'm putting my campers first. Um, and, it, and it's knowing that you can walk away to handle your camper situation before your personal thing comes up. And there's so many times where I'll like walk into an area and I see counselors clumping together, talking to each other. And I go, oh, well, what's going on over here in the Gaga pit? And there's some kid who's like putting the blood of other campers on his face and like screaming like death metal. And it's just like, <laughs> ah! and, <laughs> and the counselor is like, uh, I don't know. And it's like, that kid is, is literally like sacrificing squirrels to the Gaga gods. Like you like, let's do something about this. And like, if you put campers first, then like, that's not going to happen. Sorry if I pick like painted a very disgusting picture for some people. Um, so that, that's one thing. And then the next thing is like, when you end that day, right. End the day for your campers, right. Put them first at the end of the day, go around, do that little cat, like bunk check at the end of the night. Be like, Hey, look, uh, Howie, how was the day? Like, are you feeling good? And, and let them know before they go to sleep, hey, someone cared to listen to what I had to say today. We do like cabin chats and that's a great in the group setting, but like that little tuck in part of the day um, can mean a lot to a kid who maybe had a tough day. And, and that's that camper first mentality. Um, I want us to move into the next part of the show. And I think it's important because sometimes it's not just um, what people are saying, but sometimes what they leave out. And uh, this was piped up a little bit by some of the directors, but nobody specifically said, oh man, the best counselor I had was um, Connor or something or other. He was just an amazing sailor. The kids loved going to the sailing program. Um, you know, he knew all the ins and outs. He knew how to sail five different types of sailboats, knew all the knots. He was just 
completely capable at his job. There wasn't a director who spoke up like that. Um, and I think having that and knowing that for, from my perspective as a camp director, it's really cool to say, hey, no, 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 no. Skills still matter, but it's not the number one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll talk about that a little bit. So Matt, let's talk about why are skills not the big deal? Why, why are these values coming first? Yeah, uh, right. And, and I, I think I said this at the end of that episode, and I, I hope I didn't come across as glib when I said that no one mentioned skills. It's not that they're not important. Having that is great because we know that like the, the big thing is you get to teach the, those skills. And that's, and that's really impactful because you could unlock um, a passion for a camper that they never knew they had. Like the first time you sit in a sailboat can be really transformative and, and, and that could change the direction of a, a kid's hobby or even their life. Um, I love this quote by uh, Maya Angelou. It says, people will, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And a lot of what we're talking about so far is, is about that, right? It's about, it's about the impact that you have through the way that you interact with kids. Um, so, you know, like people might not remember you being the best archer, um, in the world, but they'll remember the intention that you put into saying goodnight to them at the end of the night, like you did there, Oliver. Um, and, uh, cause that'll leave an impact on how they feel. But in, in terms of like, the value that I would say kind of falls into that, that kind of like skill is the general mindset of being creative. Um, Travis talked a lot about, about a lot about this and um, there were some different kind of themes throughout that led to the idea of, of being creative um, because that can help you whether you have skills or not. So, you know, Travis said going off of the schedule is something that he he really liked was was checking with your director and, and saying, you know, I'm, I, I have this idea. I want to go uh, build a fort in the woods all day and we want to build like a new campsite for ourselves. Like, how awesome is that? And, and that kind of leads to the, the tip here is letting kids kind of help lead that passion and that drive to do something else and to be creative because then they're going to be bought into that process. There's a story um, at my camp about, it, it might be the one that Travis is referencing, um, how that's what a counselor did. They like all week worked on their own little campsite and the last two nights they slept out there rather than in their cabin. And that was like what the kids wanted to do. They had this huge passion for the outdoors and they were hardcore, man. They loved like roughing it and sleeping out. They didn't care about bugs in that way. And that was like a, a cabin consensus decision. And the counselors were like, yep, that's what we're doing. That's amazing. It, he, you know, they were a bunch of experienced campers who had been on the zip line and, and done all those things and they wanted something unique. So the counselor was like, awesome, let's go with it. So my episodes to go with this one, I have four for you this time. I'm really ramping it up here, just promoting our own show. Um, our very first episode was called Planning Perfect Programs. And that talked a lot about the creativity that you can bring to any style of program, whether it's something you're passionate about, that's not a traditional camp program, or something that a camper is passionate about, you can help them through the planning process with the tips we give you in that episode. The next one, uh, 10 ways to intentionally fill five minutes, episode 33, was a great way to kind of uh, be creative in those in-between moments. And then uh, number 44 and 45, it's another two-parter, was about um, being intentional and spreading a little bit of camp magic around. So those are some episodes that will help you get those creative juices flowing, if you will. Um, Oliver, where, where do you feel in, in this whole like skills being important, not being important, debate conversation how what do you feel about it yeah i get a little scared whenever you recommend to someone to go back and listen to episode number one it's like our pilot episode so yeah, yeah. it's very different from what <laughs> we do now like we're so formal we're like uh we're really really on top of our stuff it may it's still a great episode to everyone listening you should go back and listen to it like matt says but just please know we were different people back then yeah we're very <laughs> stiff that's for sure yeah um but with that being said, like this is kind of where I allude to is I, I think I have this value that skills still matter. Like you still should know how to tie your knots, rig your sailboat up, all like learn how to do those things. Um, and that's a value that I think is really important because a, a staff member who is well-versed 
uh, is practiced in that skill um, or at the very least is prepared to do something if something fails, uh, they can handle that situation. I think it's really, really important. So, um, but that's the core there is your, the value is not your ability in the skill. The value is your practice, right? You, you, you prepared yourself to make sure that the kids have a great time in your, in your activity. And, and Matt just gave me a note that's competence, right? It's the idea that you can um, go into the activity and feel confident and competent in what you're doing instead of just being there, right? Like the, there's a big difference between the staff member who practices and the staff member who doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a big difference between the staff member who practices and the staff member who's uh, capable, right? Um, because, you know, you can hire, um, you know, a world-class archer to come and teach archery, but that doesn't mean that that world-class archer is going to impart the value of this activity onto people. Right? right. Hitting 15 bullseyes in a row is great, but the kids are sitting on the bench watching you shoot bullseyes. Like that's a totally different story here. Um, right. So I think skills are important, but it's the staff member who is teaching them and is well practiced and well versed and and can speak about the program to kids in a way that shows the passion and drive and the, mm -hmm. and the care that they put into it so that the kids can take the that value of um, how do you say it? Uh, passion, I guess is the best way to say it. Uh, passion for an activity. So even if they like come to your archery and they're like, oh man, like I love how much they care about archery. It doesn't matter if they're not going to become an archer or they don't have interest in archery. It matters that they can exemplify the passion that you have into it. So I think skills are important um, because they allow you to be prepared and run your program to efficiency, but also it gives you um, the ability to pass passion to your campers totally well and, and i think it's also like there's nothing worse that like throws you off as a programmer when you like forget a knot or you forget something that like a step that you're supposed to take and and kids feel that awkwardness too and it can really break your flow in that way too so right if it, the the reason why if you're teaching archery you need to like be able to string a bow without thinking is because you're going to do it with like with thought and intention as you're teaching other kids but at the end of the day you, you got to string the rest of the bows and you, the kids don't want to wait around and watch you struggle um with that because it doesn't inspire confidence in them and especially when there's a safety aspect of it you being able to do it fluidly and showing that you're confident with these knots or you know stringing a bow or things that have a little bit of risk in, inherently in them think about the impact that your competence and your fluidity has um, on the people that you're programming with as well. All right. Um, well, people have waited. Um, we've done our episode for the most part, and we promised we're going to say what our value is. So um, without further ado, Matt, if you're putting a recording into our last episode, what is the value that you would want, or sorry, the value that you've seen in a staff member that made them one of your best staff members? Hmm. It's a great question. Um, I'm glad we asked it of other people. My, I, I think I would, I, if somebody were to ask me that without this whole episode, I like camper first mentality, I think is, is a pretty good and like a pretty common answer. But what, if I want to think of something unique, um, you know, with a little bit of digging, I came up with this one and I, I'll call it cool, not cool, cool, not cool cool not too cool in that way and what i mean by that is um is two things one you should never ever 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 strive to be the cool counselor because if you're the cool counselor it's like the cool teacher do you remember like think back when, when you know, some of you listening might be in high school um like the cool teacher were they really like the best teacher ever or did, were they cool just because they like made class really easy for you in that way um and like what is the definition of a, of a cool staff member and sometimes in my experience that person isn't really great to their colleagues because they're just like slacking off and in some way um and it, it's tricky for a lot of reasons the other what i think is like 
cool about a staff member is someone that can put themselves um, on different levels with campers. They can be right there with them being silly, goofy, jumping around, being the most awesome example of um, someone who's being really into it and on a kid's level in that way. And then they also know when it's time to transfer out of that and um, use their authority intentionally to coach campers or to help them get from one thing to another. And they can, they, they understand and are kind of self aware of where they are in that like quote unquote cool factor in that way. And then the last thing here is not being like too cool for camp. They don't, a, a great staff member doesn't put themselves above the kids in a level. They, they're not, um, the idea of being with a camper is very different than, you know, being removed in that way of like, oh yeah, of course I like I've played Gagaball a million times. I'm way better. Like it doesn't it doesn't matter that you're better than those kids. You're trying to teach them and play a game with them. Um or, or you're not smarter than those kids. You've just learned more things in them and it's your job to teach them. Right. So a, a great staff member to me um understands that there is a difference in terms of like authority and 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 you're taking care of them but you're just on this camp journey together. And that means you gotta be with them sometimes, it means you gotta lead sometimes, and it means you gotta follow sometimes. And to be flexible in that coolness, um, riding the wave of cool, if you will, um, is, is usually where, where we find a great camp counselor, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I usually, I love that because it means that coolness is being a guide, a mentor, and a, and a role model for them. And so many kids are striving for that. I think that's such a cool, I like your idea of riding the wave of cool where like you can fluctuate at times, but understanding at what point in time you need to kind of stand up and be like, all right, yep, this is what we're gonna do right now. This is, this is the game. Uh, for me, I mean, obviously we've talked so much like Matt was saying in this show about these really important values. You can go back and listen to them. I don't wanna steal someone else's value, right? Like I wanna give you more points. But this is truly one of the important ones for me. And, and it does reach that like top five for me, if not top three. And I think about a staff member I had um, where she was just extremely coachable. Um, and to explain, she wanted to get better. So she, she listened really well. Um, she watched others. And then she practiced and reviewed herself almost like an athlete. And, and she wasn't like an athlete, right? Like I come from a football background where we literally watch film about ourselves and judge. Um, it's not like we were doing something that, that extreme with her, but it was this I, idea of like, hey, how do I wanna get better? And I, a lot of people might think, well, this is great because she was just following orders, but what you need to remember is athletes still have to play the game without the coach on the field, right? Like you still need to go out there and do your thing. And she was able to do that, come back, get coached, and go back to acting independently on her own with the coaching that she had. And I think that was beautiful because, you know, as somebody who sees myself as a teacher and a coach and assisting with someone's growth, she still made mistakes. Like, it wasn't like she was free from them. And it wasn't like she would get coached on something and wouldn't go back and make that mistake. But it was her ability to take, I don't want to say take criticism, but take the coaching, say, okay, that's how it is going to make me better. Or, hey, how is that going to make me better? And then she was able to go out in the camp and put that into motion. And what was really cool was watching her improve, right? And seeing that improvement over time, because there's so many times as a camp director where you might coach someone and nothing comes of it. And you're just like, man, mm -hmm. I just did two weeks of staff training and we're in week one and nobody remembers anything. But like to have this one staff member who specifically was just like, oh, they actually learned stuff from staff training. And now it's week seven or eight. We're almost at the end of the summer. And I still see them on this path of wanting to learn, become a better counselor and using the skills that they learned back in week one or staff training to make themselves continue to improve. And then I know that that staff member is coachable because that improvement continues to happen every single day. And I think that was one of my favorite counselors to watch. Um, and she was definitely one of the best. Mm, I love coachability. That's great. It's a great value. Yeah. Uh, but that's the show, people. I know my transitions <laughs> are bad now. Um, but... <laughs> 
But with that being said, we do always end with a little something special, and that is our Eggle time. So it's ever growing, ever learning. It's a trick, a tip, a game, or a song for our counselors to use to become better every day. And Matt, what are you doing for your Eggle today? Okay, I'm going to do something unprecedented here, Oliver. Um, this one costs a little bit of money. It costs a little bit oh, more no. money than other Eggles. I, I've recommended apps that cost a, a couple bucks and stuff like that. Um, but there's a lot of like personality quizzes and things out there. I've recommended Love Languages. That's a free one that you can do. Um, there's there's uh, Myers Briggs, which actually isn't as scientifically proven as everyone thinks it is. Um, but this is one that that has really affected the way that I think about myself and the way that I work. And I know that um, we've done this with summer staff at my my last camp job. Um, and it's the Clifton Strengths. Uh, work profile assessment or personality assessment and it's by Gallup which is you know one of the biggest um, polling and, and evaluation firms in, in the entire world um, and and through their surveys and their research they've um, they've acquired I believe it's 34 strengths that people have and the idea is that if you build on your strengths that is a much better way that you will be like satisfied with your work where you'll be doing the, the work that really matters for you and and you will excel in what you're doing rather than you know we constantly think about how, how to work on our weaknesses um and so so for me my top strengths are um includer communication belief arranger and responsibility those are my top five and so i know that that's where i naturally fall so if you if you give me a deadline and you say i need to do something i will do it for you all the time because that's one of my strengths but that might not be um you know say one of oliver's strengths i this is not a, a saying about your responsibility skills oliver this is just an example but if but if oliver has different response different strengths in that way then oliver and i make a good team because he doesn't have that strength and i can be that responsibility person for our team and that's kind of the benefit and if you are approaching you know a staff member or someone you work with who doesn't have that strength of responsibility you're just going to be beating your head against the wall trying to get them to be more responsible when the better answer is let me give you a system that you can be more responsible with rather than you trying to gain this natural ability and when i took the assessment it costs like i don't know, american probably like 20 bucks american um to find out your top five i i've only ever figured out my top five because i don't it doesn't really matter to me what the rest of them are and it really changed the way that i thought about myself and the way that i work i recommend anybody uh do this i have some some people in my new camp doing it and um they really enjoyed it so far too so i highly recommend it there's a link in the show notes um and oliver i think you should do it uh because i would love to know your strengths as well uh yeah uh, i have done it before i don't really recall what all my strengths were i th i think i remember one was i think satisfaction or something where i get satisfaction from like if people tell me or show me that i've like done something well um hmm. like so um, but which is really funny because when you come to love languages, words of affirmation is like my lowest one. Hmm, um, interesting. So, um, so it's, it's a strange one. I, I mean, then again, I haven't done it in a long time. So maybe I'll fork up the money and I'll go and do it <laughs> as well. Um, I, and I will say like, I was like, when I had done mine, I was part of an organization that was anytime a new staff member came in, like a, usually it was full-time staff member, they would do the strengths finder, um, assessment so that everyone, in the building knew what their strengths were coming in. And mm -hmm. then that way we knew right off the bat, hey, where can we go to this new person for help? Um, where is this new person gonna be a part of our team? Like what part of the puzzle of our team do they fit in the best? Um, and it also let them know, cause we would share our strengths. Like we'd copy the folder over and be like, hey, these are my five strengths. So that you know, working with me, what to anticipate um, and whenever you're doing any of those types of personality tests, um, if you know what your team is like, uh, you can you can find out where each person's part fits. Mm -hmm. And then you, you think about, all right, cool. If we're gonna be mo the most effective team, where can I put someone? I may have also gotten facilitator. So that's maybe why I think about it that way. <laughs> uh, um, for my uh, Eggle this week, um, I'm gonna go into one. So most camps will be doing evaluations at the end of every single week, right? Um, the campers will come in, they'll evaluate their time, and then they 
um, we'll, we'll get to go home. Maybe it's online once they get home. But if, uh, nonetheless, like your camp should be evaluating campers. If your camp is not evaluating, please start evaluating. Um, it can help in so many different ways, not just in your ability to produce, but also it lets you know what direction your camp needs to head in, right? Um, so you can fix like the quick problems. Like if somebody says like, this wasn't a great experience, you can go and fix it. If they're like, hey, this is where we want to move into. Evaluations are great um, planners for you. So please, please, please do evaluations. But you as a counselor, right? I, I, there's so many camps I know of that they gather the evaluations at the end of the session. They don't have the time to really, they'll maybe flip through them or they'll put them in a folder and they'll be like, we'll get back to these at the end of the summer when we have the time to think about this because camp is so busy. Right. Um, um, and another thing is they don't always want to show staff because it might hurt feelings, right? Like you don't want to have your staff feeling bum if they got a bad review from a camper or from a parent or from whatever. Uh, and I... I firmly believe the opposite. Like I want people to see their evaluations. I want them to have that ability to be coachable and to work themselves up. So um, take that little bit of honesty and ask for your evaluation as a counselor. Be like, hey, I want to know what my campers thought about me. I want to know what you are thinking about me. What's our evaluation process? Um, and I think that's really, really, really important. So figure out what your evaluations are. Um, if you... Uh, enjoyed today's show. Uh, we would be so grateful if you left us a review wherever you are listening to this podcast. Your ratings reviews not only let us know what you like about the show or don't like about the show, but also helps boost our rankings and helps other people discover the show um, so they can decide if they like it or don't. Uh, yeah. It's true. Well, and I, I haven't said this in a few episodes, but like, please send Oliver and I your suggestions for future shows. Um, I know we've gotten a few that we haven't got to yet, but that doesn't mean we do, we don't want to hear your suggestions because you really have the power to guide um, this show in, in whatever direction you feel like would be helpful for camp counselors. So um, if you're a director or kind of like a, a, a middle manager of, of, of a camp and, and you see there's kind of like a knowledge gap in staff that you're seeing in the application process or whatever, send me an email, matt at gocamp.pro, and we'll get your episode in. You could join us as a guest maybe, uh, and that would be awesome. So uh, if you are interested in that, email me. You can find all of my contact information as well as links and stuff from the show. You can find that at gocamp.pro slash FCC, and there's lots of great stuff there um, from our past episodes, and you can find the other Go Camp Pro podcasts at that website. Uh, and that's really important. So thanks for listening, friends. Camp is camp and camp's all good. <laughs>